Hi there, my name is Doug Milburn. I am president and co-founder of 45 Drives. So you may have clicked in the video looking for the usual cast of characters, Brett and crew. Uh, they're not here today. You got me instead for better or for worse. So um, here to talk about ransomware. We're a data storage company uh, here to keep your data secure in storage. Uh, one of the big threats to your data is ransomware. There's a couple of related perils in that too that we should consider and that are really protected by the same measures. That would be accidental deletion and it would also be malicious deletion by insiders. So that's our context to today's video. So I'm here to tell you uh, why you should be concerned about that. Very, very concerned. I mean, everybody is, but I'm going to talk a little bit about why you should be concerned. And I'm also here to talk and give you an overview of uh, something called snapshotting and how to use modern copy on write file systems in order to give yourself a whole level of protection that will just allow you to sleep at night. Let's just think about something. Let's think about data. We're in the data business. We're not in the broader security business. We're in the, the data business. But security is part of data. And not only that, but I think, and you think about your computer systems, uh, whether you're in the IT profession itself, or whether you own a business, or whether you're a, a manager of a government organization. Think about your computer systems. Disaster strikes, okay? Uh, it could be malware. I talk about ransomware uh, as, as an element of that, but let's think in general, it's malware. You could have a malicious uh, employee, you could have internal sabotage could happen, and you can have things like accidental deletion. If everything goes wrong in your computer network and something damages everything in there, you know, your workstations, it's okay. You can rebuild them, uh, you know, erase them, put new software on them. Uh, get everything back up and running the way it was. You got nice fresh workstations, everything's good. You get your network back up and running. And what about your data? Most cases, if your data is gone, you're in big, big trouble. This is why ransomware makes the headlines, this is why people worry about ransomware. Uh, if you just get a virus infecting a workstation, it's a momentary uh, hassle. Yeah, it's a big agony, but it's, it's not that big. Ransomware, we get people held for ransoms of many millions of dollars. Uh, most countries or many countries, you can no longer pay those ransoms and you're looking at really, really serious issues. Uh, municipalities, uh, if you're a municipality, imagine if you lose your data, lose all your taxpayer accounts. Lose your, uh, your, 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 your geo uh, data, um, uh, lose your data in your 911 system. Uh, you're in big trouble. Um, so think about that, and when you think about it that way, okay, you need a comprehensive protection strategy over your whole system, keep malware out, uh, all other forms of cyber attacks, as much internal protection as you can. You need all that, but your data is special and deserves special attention. Okay, so we're talking about special attention for your data. Let's talk a little bit about what happened when we got ransomware uh, about 10 years ago. We backed up lots. So what's the first, uh, first pillar of your data protection uh, system? It should be backing up. That's it. Make another copy. Uh, yeah, and we have multiple perils we got to protect ourselves against here. So uh, physical perils. Uh, a sprinkler goes off in your server room. Uh, you got to protect against that. Backup set geographically distinct. Okay, now that could be in the other side of your building or it could be in another building, it could be in another city, anything like that. So backing up and getting the backup as far away as you possibly can is a great thing. So backing up is the backbone of it. We came out well in our ransomwareing because we were backed up. We were backed up once a day. What's the problem with backing up? The problem with backing up is it takes time. If you have very small data sets, this conversation isn't for you. But once you got multiple terabytes of data, uh, it becomes, in, in ten, particularly tens of terabytes of data or bigger, uh, backing up becomes something that takes some time and it ties up system resources. Our backups run at night. And uh, 
And so, you know, we'd end up backing up daily. So the time you back up daily, your risk on data loss is really down to that period to the last backup. Okay. But if you're a very active organization and losing a day's data would be a problem for you, then you should look farther. And that's what we did. We looked farther. So to protect your data farther, so Vela backup scheme is uh, up functioning verified backup scheme is something that most places have. And it's something you're gonna go back to that's gonna do great things for you in the event of randomware, in the event of accidental deletion, uh, and all the other perils that can go after your data. But when your data gets really large, it just gets more and more difficult to back up your data to do a full backup set. Uh, example, we have many a customer has data sets that are in the petabyte. And uh, hundreds of terabytes are, are bad enough, but when you get in the petabytes, it just takes a long time to push a, a, a backup set off. And uh, anyway, what's the next level? The next level is copy on write file systems. So for anybody who's not familiar in that, I'm just gonna touch base on that uh, uh, very, very lightly in this. Um, so copy and write file systems is something called snapshotting. That's the answer for large data. Um, and, uh, and, and it's just the greatest thing. Good news, anybody who's a 45 Drives customer, uh, most of what we install for people is copy and write file systems. ZFS is a copy and write uh, file system that we use and recommend and will install by default on single servers. Uh, CephFS is a file system that runs on Ceph clusters. Both of them are copy on write, and both of them have the ability to do snapshotting. Copy on write does all kinds of marvelous things for you, but it, it, it's snapshotting that's important in a getting down to the ultimate data protection scheme. So in copy on write, what's copy on write mean? I, I, I'm not gonna get into it in depth, but what it means is that it, it's a file system that makes extensive use of pointers. If I copy a file, I don't actually have to make another copy of the file. My other copy of the file, it's an entry in a file table that has a pointer to the blocks where the information is actually stored. So I want to create a new, a new copy of the file in a copy and write system. It's just very simply going to make another file table entry and create another pointer that points to exactly the same blocks of data. It's very, very efficient. Okay. And what it means is you can do things like make a uh, it, well, you'll do a snapshot. The snapshot, think of it like a backup set, but it's not a backup set. And it's not as safe as a backup set in some ways, okay? Because you're not actually creating new copies of your data. What you're doing is you're taking a, basically a snapshot of your file table and you're pointing into the blocks that saved the data at the moment you took the snapshot. Okay? So it's not as secure, but it's plenty secure. Okay? but it's not secure against things like destruction of your machine or, or whatever else. We have to take different precautions in that. But what is beautiful about a snapshot is it's almost instant, okay? and it takes very, very little system resource to do it. And it's extremely space efficient. Uh, snapshots will not create any extra uh, data on your storage device, so it will not use up any extra space. All that said, your normal use of the file system will take up new space. And when you delete a file, okay, if you didn't have those snapshots, the blocks used would go back into the pool of unused blocks. They don't because you're pointing to them from an old snapshot. So it, so it does use resources, but it uses them extremely efficiently. So it's super fast, super efficient. What does that mean in a anti-ransomware, uh, anti-malicious employee, anti-accidental deletion scheme? Okay. Well, let me put this together. Let me say your risk of losing a file due to, and I'm going to stick on ransomware, but the other perils are the same. Um, if you've made a, a copy, be it a full backup set or a snapshot, you save a file, and after that, ransomware hits that file and encrypts it and resaves it. Okay and then you take your next backup or snapshot, you will have lost that file. Okay. What are the odds of that happening? Because most of the time, if I got something I saved two months ago, my ransomware comes, I got a backup set in between. So the so vast majority of my files are not gonna be that situation. Well, really simple, if you've got an active file system, so the people that we deal with have very, very active uh, file systems, uh, active workflow in there. 
And what it comes down to is how fast is the ransomware encrypting files? And then how fast are you saving files? And then you look out of all the files you have, what are the chances that the one file you just saved, that ransomware happens to hit that before the next snapshot happens? Well, the really simple answer is it depends on your interval. The longer your interval, the higher your chances of lo actually losing that file. So that's what it's all about, it's trying to shrink that interval. So what we did a long time ago is we looked at that and said, well, we're going to up our level of protection uh, to a huge extent if we move from 24 hour down to five minute intervals. So we go at a much more rapid interval uh, on snapshotting. So our odds, and, and, and by doing that, our odds of bumping and having that uh, coincident timing of something getting saved, then encrypted by ransomware within the interval between snapshots, reduces and it gets very small and it gets basically infinitesimal. So, um, and, uh, and, and, and that becomes really, really, really important. So imagine you have uh, a, a, a ransomware virus uh, plugging away, uh, somebody opened an attachment on an email or something, one of the, the, the really tough to defend against uh, ways that these things attack you. And, uh, and it's plugging away, encrypting your files, and it's going at that file set in, you know, in some order, what probably gonna look like it's random to you. Okay? That thing may operate, and you know, we, we've had clients who've been attacked by ransomware, and it will operate, sometimes it can operate for quite a long time before you detect it. Now, we have other things to say, and it's way outside the scope of this video, other things to say about how to detect a ransomware attack. The sooner you detect it, obviously, the less damage done. But you get into the situation of having to wind back. It, it, it becomes difficult to restore. It becomes a real pain in the butt for the IT team to restore this. Why? Because you can't tell. So from the time, if you go back, figure out where it is. So looking at dealing with things is pretty simple. You go back, you find out your source of your contamination, shut your network down anyway, find out where the contamination came from, look through your server logs, look on the workstations, figure out where the virus is operating. Maybe it'll have told you, maybe it'll have flagged and said it's asked you for ransom already. Um, and shut the thing down, cleanse it, you're done. Now you gotta deal with the aftermath. So how do you do that? Well, it's like this. You got a, a set of data that's been encrypted, the files have been encrypted over time. So you gotta go back to the start of that. Every file in your collection that has a date modified that's after the start of your encryption is suspect. Ouch, that's a problem. Yeah, it's a real serious problem because you could have files that have been inactive for years and it went in and maybe they're valuable files to you and it went in and encrypted it and resaved it. Now it's got a date modded that's, uh, you know, that's really, really recent. And it's got a whole bunch of files and you go, which are good files? which are bad files and you have to deal with that. And if you say, well, that's really easy, I'll just wind back to before my ransomware attack and you can do that but, uh, and, and restore all those files. But you'll be restoring, a lot of times you have files that were actually modified, not files that were created, but files that were modified from a file created before then, you're gonna put an old version in. So you're gonna cause pollution of your data set. So it becomes a real problem. And so really what has to happen is you have to go through that and you have to identify what is a ransomware file and what's not a ransomware file. There are ways to do that. There's various ways. I mean, one of them is just try to open it. There, there's other ways that we can talk about in future videos and I, I look forward to talking about. Anyway, you figure that out. But the scheme is if you have rapid um, snapshotting going, then the algorithm is just really simple, okay? And, and, and it can be done at a user level. IT does not have to do it for the users. Open something, you could just let your users, uh, one uh, repair scheme is just let your users go through and use their files normally. And if they try to open a file and it's corrupt, you just need to go back and use shadow copy, which is available in many systems. And uh, use shadow copy and just restore to the previous version. And that's gonna get you fixed. And that's all there is to it. Okay, uh, but it can be a zoo. Uh, and uh, anyway, that, that, that's a whole other discussion. So anyway, let me summarize this. Okay? If your system gets attacked by so many perils, okay, uh, and you look at it and you say, you can repair your workstations. Why? 
Worst case, new hardware. Worst case, new software installs. Generally, lots less than that if it's a virus. Okay? It's a pain in the ass, but you can get that done. If your data is contaminated by ransomware software, by encryption by ransomware software, or uh, you know, fully deleted or whatever else, you've got a problem unless you're protected. If you have a backup set, excellent. Hope you have a backup set. Everybody in this day and age should be operating with a backup set and your damage will be limited by your backup set, but it will not be eliminated. And if you're active and losing, you know, one, two, three days or a week of files, uh, of file changes is a problem to you, which it is to most organizations, it's a big, big problem, uh, then you want to do better than that. You want to do better than that? If you've got a copy and write file system, it's very little incremental cost to come up with a, a snapshotting policy and to come up with a verification policy to install detection of looking for suspicious activity to detect something operating like that and then to have a backup uh, uh, to have a restoration plan to come back to that it's all very straightforward if you're in a copy and write file system it becomes incredibly easy and uh, and then just thinking about that just taking step one have a great snapshotting policy you can go home and you can sleep at night and not worry about it because you know if disaster strikes, your data is safe. Anyway, that's all on this subject. Uh, if you're at all interested in ransomware and uh, protection against it, and like I say the other closely related perils of malicious employee deletion or accidental deletion, uh, give us a shout, talk to your account manager here, or get on us on social media with us and, and talk about it. And uh, love to have a conversation with you and we can help you set up and help you sleep at night. Thank you very much and uh, look forward to getting in front of the camera again with you sometime.